everyone. Welcome to our virtual hymn sing. We will begin our hymn sing with the advent of our God, which is in the LBW, hymn number 22. Next hymn is three one two. Once he came in blessing. Next hymn is over to our ELW book, 243, Lost in the Night.
stars and night. Tim is four three six. Wake awake for night is flying.
37 on Jordan's Stormy Bank I stand. 437. Jordan, Stormy Bay, 
now we will send it to 40. Fight. The advent of our God shall be our theme for prayer. Come, let us meet him on the road and place for him prepare. Welcome to our virtual worship this morning. Glad and happy that you are able to join us as we continue to worship our God on this second Sunday of Advent. My dear brothers and sisters, Thank you for being here, and I pray that you will indeed feel blessed and spirit-filled as we continue to sing songs of praise and give God thanks for the promise of love eternal. A few announcements, uh, actually one announcement, and that is to please check your bulletins. Announcements are there for all of the various ministries that we offer at Redeemer, please take a moment to read all of those as there are some wonderful opportunities for you to share in the ministry at Redeemer. As we always remind ourselves before we continue our worship, again, let us remind ourselves of our mission statement. As a community of faith, we worship the triune God. We are called to love and serve all God's people and creation through word and deed. Let us continue as we prepare our hearts to worship.
And now, my dear beloved, let us turn to God as we confess our sin and seek God's forgiveness. Blessed be the God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not loved or welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. O people of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, our sins are forgiven and we are free. Free from all that holds us back. Free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May we be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Holy are you, God of righteousness and peace. You promised to wait with patience for all to come to repentance and to send your prophet to cry in the wilderness 
to prepare the way of the Lord. As we light this second candle, open our ears to hear you speak tenderly to your people. Open our hearts to welcome you as a shepherd who gently leads the flock. Comfort us, O God, and forgive the sin of your people. Reveal your glory to us and speak to us your word of peace. Amen. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, at this time, as we light the second Advent candle, let us sing the hymn, Light the Candle. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you on the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our Lord. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Righteousness shall prepare a pathway for God. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell. Righteousness shall prepare a pathway for God. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. shall go before the Lord and shall prepare for God a pathway. Righteousness shall prepare a pathway for God. A reading from Second Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire? But 
in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of the one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camels here with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do you know how the substitute organist became the regular organist? Well, it is said that the minister was preoccupied with thoughts of how he was going to ask the congregation to come up with more money than they were expecting for repairs to the church building. Therefore, he was annoyed to find the regular organist was sick and a substitute had been brought in at the last minute. The substitute wanted to know what to play. Here is a copy of the service, he said impatiently. But you will have to think of something to play after I make the announcement about the finances. Well, during the service, the minister paused and said, brothers and sisters, we are in great difficulty. The roof repairs cost twice as much as we expected, and we needed $4,000 more. Any of you who can pledge 100 or more, please stand up. Well, at that moment, this substitute organist played the Star Spangled Banner. And that is how the substitute became the regular organist. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A man was wandering in the woods one day pondering all the questions of life, the universe, and his own personal problems. The man couldn't find any answers and so he sought help from God. Wanting no distraction and Wanting to be alone, he went up to the mountain where it was quiet, and there on the mountaintop, he shouted, God, God, are you there, God? And God responded, of course I am here, child. What is it? What is it? Well, I have a few questions. Mind if I ask? The man shouted once again. Surely not at all. Go right ahead, my son. Ask anything. Ask of anything. Well, the man asked the first question. God, what is a million years to you? And God said, well, 
A million years to me is only a second. Hmm, the man wondered. He then went on to ask God again. God, what is a million dollars worth to you? God said, well, a million dollars to me is only worth a penny. Wow, really? That's cool. And so the man lifted his eyebrows and proceeded to ask a final question. God, can I have a penny then? And God cheerfully said, sure, son, sure, just in a second. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved. The other of Second Peter reminds us this morning in our second lesson. With the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord, he says, is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, is patient with us, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Brothers and sisters in Christ, there is good news this morning. There is good news because God is coming. God is coming to deliver God's people. And as the prophet Isaiah says, like a shepherd, God will gather the lambs and carry them in God's bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. We are in good hands and our futures our future is secured, my friends, because you see, we are in God's hand. Today, as we continue in the season of Advent, season of watching and waiting in anticipation of the coming of the Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us. My dear brothers and sisters, let us be reminded that in God's time, Every lowly places will be lifted up and every crooked path will be made straight. And so whatever struggles we may be facing, my brothers and sisters, whatever it may be, whether we are faced with the challenges of finance or supporting our families at this time because of the COVID, whether we are sick or our loved one is sick and maybe in the hospital, whether we are going through struggles with our family and have conflicts within our family, whatever it is, we can be assured that God will smooth them out. Again, to refer to Second Peter, in accordance to God's promise, we wait for a new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while we are waiting for these things, we are asked to strive to be found by God at peace without spot and blemish. And we guard the patience of our Lord as salvation. And so as you can see, my dear brothers and sisters, with the good news of God's coming, we are encouraged to strive to be found by God at peace without our blemish. As we are preparing and waiting the coming of our Lord, my friends, we are also encouraged to make straight what is crooked. And according to John the Baptist, one way to do that is to turn to God and to confess and repent of our sins and ask for God's forgiveness. In other words, we are asked to look deep inside our hearts and face the truth about our lives and make the necessary changes changing the direction of our lives to live as God would want us to live our lives, to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves, to live out our baptism vows, that is to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ Jesus through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus. To strive for justice and peace in all the earth. To shine our lights, my dear brothers and sisters, so that others can see the glory of God 
and give God thanks and praise. You know, to come think of it, one good way to put Christ in Christmas again is to put Christ first in our, our lives and turn our lives over to God. Indeed, as we prayed before, holy are you, O God of righteousness and peace. You have promised to wait with patience for all to come to repentance and to send your prophet to cry in the willingness to prepare the way of the Lord. And so today, Lord, we ask that you will open our ears to hear you speak tenderly to us, your people to open our hearts to welcome you as a shepherd who gently leads the flock. We ask, O oh God, to comfort us and forgive us of our sins and to reveal your glory to us, to speak to us your word of peace. In closing, if I may take and be brave enough to sing one of my favorite songs this morning, you probably know, if you do know, sing along with me if you will. It goes like this. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. No more crying here, we are going to see the king. No more crying there, we are going to see the king. No more crying here, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. No more dying there, we are going to see the king. No more dying here, we are going to see the king. No more dying there, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the king. So I say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, hang on. Emmanuel is on his way, and it should not take more than a second. Amen. Beloved, let us now turn to God as we confess our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God, only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, soul, and mind, especially Dee Grover, Christina Jackson, Lois Hirschberger, Winnie Ferguson, Patty Paul, Aaron Winter, Beth Connolly, Linda Bartelson, Lynn Lepo, Lois Gradle, Jean Lippincott, Danny Vile, Marty Danielson, <coughs> excuse me, David Erdman, Edith Williams, Elizabeth Rhinus, Linda Winter, Chris Ryan, Tim Cousy, Helen Susco, Don Farnham, Mike Dunn, Mary Lou and Donald Robinson, the family and friends of Lenore Miller who passed away, Don Schwenk, Robin Zaretsky, Linda Austin, Pastor Ron who has bilateral pneumonia, Miles' sister Gloria who is suffering from her third stroke, and all others that we name aloud or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve, be a companion to all who are lonely, and to those who are sick or struggling with depression, and gather all people in your healing embrace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. O oh, eternal God, we give thanks for the saints who have prepared your way in the wilderness and taught us to continue their faithful work. Make their generous lives an example for all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you all always. And also with you, let us take a moment to share the Lord's peace with each other. Once again, thank you for your generous uh, offering. We thank you as ministry continues to happen for your continued support. Uh, because without your giving, we wouldn't be able to do what we are doing at Redeemer. So thank you again for your generosity. And I pray that you will be receiving God's blessing as you have been a blessing to us.
cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me your joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. And now gathering to one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, my dear brothers and sisters, the creator of the stars, bless your Advent waiting. The long-expected Savior fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Just as a reminder, today is the last day to turn in your donations for the giving tree. So if you intend to donate but have not been able to drop your donations off at the church, please reach out to Patty Finn so you can make arrangements. Please consider joining in the Silent Night recording. Um, Holly previously sent out the words and the music and the instructions for you how to do that. If you've lost it or you need it resent, we can do that. But it will be great if we would have a huge participation from our congregation to join in the video. What a special way to celebrate Christmas Eve and be able to see everybody that we haven't seen in a while. Um, our 2021 church offering envelopes have arrived. We will be making arrangements for how you can pick them up from the church office. So look for an email to come out in the next day or two. As our COVID numbers are increasing all around us, please remember to be vigilant and be smart and be safe, wear your mask, maintain six feet of social distancing, and above all else, wash your hands. If in doubt, wash your hands again. Please join us in about 10 minutes for coffee time. And go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And Gail, to quickly jump off of your Giving Tree gift card, I did want to bring to everyone that Target Circle has 10% off of gift cards right now. So if you go to Target and buy a gift card and you have Target Circle, you would get 10% off of that. So, yeah.